Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshe Explain Friend channel. This is Moshe Explain. Over the last few years I've been asked several times how do I customize or modify the MVS 3.8 TK4 startup procedure so that I can add things that I want to be started at startup or re remove things or just uh, change it. And, um, and so today in this uh, video we're going to look at how to do that. Okay, so I'm logged on here to MVS 3.8. TK4, uh, the latest update that we have as of 2023, which is update eight, um, update nine. Um, I keep hearing questions about that as well. I have no idea when update nine, if ever, will come out, but that doesn't really matter because I've shown in this channel about other ways to uh, get to a much more up-to-date TK4 update eight um, uh, with uh, Rob prints amazing extensions for TK4, but everything I'm going to show in this video also applies to everything else. So uh, the main thing to understand is that when we work with TK4 uh, MVS 3.8, there is a, well, actually, let me show this. There is automation going on. And um, if you go here and we'll see that there is two address bases, command one and BSP pilot. Those, this is a, a monitor, an automation and monitoring uh, system that was written by, um, by uh, a person called uh, Bandke and uh, Volker Bandke and uh, I think, and uh, what it does is uh, constantly monitors the system and automates certain things that people uh, typically would have done in a data center through the operator, such, such as uh, um, changing the SMF um, collection data sets, dumping those, making sure that the dump data set for events doesn't get full, um, and many other tasks. So uh, this system here, BSP pilot and command 01 kind of work together to monitor and make the system be up and running all the time. And that's, by the way, why when we work with MBS 3.8 and you keep it running somewhere on a server in the cloud, it will keep on running for years because there's these two th things here, these two address bases that make sure that your system will keep on running forever. So, uh, and that, those two address bases are also the ones that start up things for you when you IPL MBS 3.8, when you bring it up, it's these two that work together to make sure that uh, all these subsystems get started that uh, you want to start. And so today we're gonna look at how to modify um, starting of subsystems. So if you go to um, 3.4, where we can browse uh, things, you'll see that there is always a nomenclature of sys1.parmlib, for instance, and there's also sys2.parmlib. Uh, not in this case, but for instance, for proclib, it exists. So sys1 is the things, everything that's in sys1 is kind of required for the proper IPLing and shutdown of the system. sys2 are kind of extensions such as additional um, programming languages, additional compilers, and stuff that's been added, added on, and where you can go make change. Uh, wherever it says sys1, it's always advisable to not really make changes unless you really know what you're doing. And so today we're going to look actually at this one problem. So um, in sys one parmlib, there is a data set which is called startup minimum, minimal. And if you do a B here for browsing, we'll see what happens here. This is the minimal um, startup uh, of MBS. And in this video, we're not going to go and describe how an IPL really works, how the nucleus gets loaded, how all the address space structures gets uh, get set up by the, uh, by the nucleus. We're just going to look at how everything gets started after the nucleus, after what's called in the Linux parlance, the kernel has been loaded. So uh, typically, in most environments, you will have start standard. That's the one that is being used. And you see here, if you go to sys1.parmlib start standard, there is a command here, command uh, start mf1. 
and that's the one that starts MF1. And if you remove that, then MF1 is not going to be um, started anymore. So if I do that right now, if I delete that, um, then MF1 is not going to be started anymore. Obviously, be careful what you do here. Anything that you do in Sys1 Parm Lip, you always want to be extremely careful. But um, for instance, here is the, the tape is going to be turned on certain settings for the uh, for the console. Uh, certain other things settings are being configured here. But if you don't want uh, MF1 to be started, then just just remove this line and it won't be started anymore. It's pretty simple. Um, but again, always be careful what you do here. There's other data sets here that are very important. Um, and I've described those in other videos. Uh, if you want to increase the maximum uh, number of users in TSO, you would do this here. But anyway, so this is all about how to change the startup procedure. This is the place where you do it. Be careful what you do. But as always, you can always just make a backup uh, before you make changes, it's very easy to back up a whole data center uh, with, with Hercules. You just make a copy of the whole MVS uh, directory. If something didn't work out, you just restore the backup. Very simple. But backups is still the way as of 2023 to make sure that uh, user error, uh, sometimes uh, stupidity uh, can be recovered from. Thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to this uh, mainframe channel yet, now would be a good time to do it. And otherwise, I'll see you soon. Thank you.